Hi, I'm Kerry Mayu with Phoenix Restoration Equipment. And in this video, I will show you a quick and easy way to replace the uh, variable frequency drive or the VFD. And what it controls is the, um, the variable speed blower. Uh, for this operation, you need um, a number one Phillips, a number two Phillips, an 1132nd uh, open end wrench, and a T20 Torx bit and you could also use a T20 screwdriver. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is um, go ahead and remove the four screws and nuts that hold the VFD into place. Um, if you look on the side here, there's these four. That's the ones that you're going to be removing. The nuts are on the inside. So we'll grab the 1132nd wrench and uh, we'll start to remove the screws and the nuts. And of course, due to the backside, you have to reach back and feel for the nut and use the open end wrench to hold the nuts in place while you remove the screws. And once you get all the nuts removed, Remove the P-clamp that holds the harness to that lower right hand nut and if you lay the, the VFD right here on top of the rotor. Because next thing we'll have to do is to transfer the wires from the old VFD to the new. So next thing we have to do is remove the wires from the VFD. Uh, I highly suggest, uh, because it's very important that the wires go back where they're supposed to, is to uh, take a picture of the position of the wires that way you'll have that as a reference for when you reinstall the new VFD. So we'll just shoot a picture real quick with this and we'll set that aside for right now. Now the the, v, the new VFD will come pre-programmed and it'll already have this jumper installed. Um, the only two wires that are the same color are these two gray ones so those are the ones that you really have to pay attention to uh, in order to make sure you don't uh, cross them over or transverse the positions. So first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and remove the, the top five and that's with the number one Phillips. And after those five are removed, now we can go ahead and remove the lower ones. And that's done with the number two Phillips. So Uh, it may be necessary to remove the jumper in order to get access to holes for the those lower wires. Alright, 
and there it is. So since this is a new one, I'm going to go ahead and reuse this one to show you the, uh, how to reinstall it. Um, of course, all of the wires are mixed up now, but I'll go ahead and reference your picture previously taken so that you get the wires in the right position. And I'll go ahead and start with the bottom ones. So the first one's uh, black. And the next one is pink. Oh, actually red. And then the next one is a double brown wire. And next is a double orange. Next, a double yellow. And finally, the green wire. All right. After that, we'll go ahead and reinstall the jumper. Uh, it's important to know that the tooth that is missing would, would be in the number two position. So it goes in this orientation. Next, we'll reinstall the wires on the top. And the first one is first one's a pink wire, which is in position seven. Next is the white wire in position eight. Next, purple wire in position nine. And position 10 will skip, and position 11 will be the gray wire that's marked number 19. And finally, the remaining gray wire will go in position 12. Now, once you have all the wires in place, and we'll have to reinstall the VFD onto the unit. And to do so, uh, just simply slide it back into place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the lower right-hand corner screw and nut. The only thing we're not gonna do is put the P-clamp onto the screw uh, just because it makes it a little bit easier without the harness in a way to reinstall the rest of the screws. So we'll go ahead and start this one. And we're going to tighten it up just enough to where we can pivot it. And it'll hold it into place while we install the rest.
I'm gonna make that one just a little bit tighter. There we go. All right, once that one's in, we could do two screws and nuts on the other side. And again, we'll start these by hand. And once they're all started, we'll go ahead and tighten up all of them except for the one on the lower right hand corner. Alright, once those three, is a, three nuts are tight, we'll go ahead and do this one. So that we can install the P clamp for the wiring harness. And that is it.